So today, I've decided to address that little question once and for all so that people can finally leave this subject alone. So let's jump right in. Now, to clarify before I move too far into things, when I say I don't do rows, I'm specifically referring to traditional free weight rowing variations like old school bent over rows, T-bar rows, ten lay rows, and crock rows or dumbbell rows. I do in fact do a lot of rowing because the face pull is technically a variation of a row, and I do a hell of a lot of face pulls and have done them for many years, but nobody seems to consider this fact when they accuse me of being a non-rower. I also do cable rows every few training cycles and have actually reincorporated them into my program this past week. Half the reason I bought the squat rack I bought was so that I would have access to the cable apparatus, specifically so that I could do cable rows and face pulls on it. And I absolutely believe that cable rows are an exercise that's very undervalued by many weight training enthusiasts precisely because of its ability to heavily target the musculature in the middle of the back while largely sparing the lower back from undue stress. But that is neither here nor there. According to the popular myth, I simply don't do rows. So let's just stick with that. Now, the question is why I don't do these traditional free weight rowing variations. And the answer is rather simple. Through the course of trial and error over a period of several years, I determined that all the forms of free weight rowing that you typically see people doing, pen lay rows, t-bar rows, bent rows, dumbbell rows, whatever, don't have any carryover whatsoever to my squat or my deadlift and don't aid my power or athleticism in any meaningful way. Nor do they provide my back with any additional hypertrophy beyond what I can get from deadlifts, weighted chin-ups, and face pulls. Further, they actually detract from my ability to train the deadlifts hard because they're so fatiguing and stressful to the lower back, and this decreased volume and intensity of deadlifting ultimately leads to less strength and less muscle in the long term. If we analyze the anatomy of the back, it becomes very clear that the reason why most people are doing barbell rows is to work their lats. Whether they're aware of this fact or not, that's the reason. Because the primary function of the lats is to extend the humerus, which is what's occurring during a row. Bodybuilding lore also states that rows need to be done in order to create back thickness, whereas chin-ups or lat pull-downs should be done to create width. And that you can't create a thick back without doing rows. This notion is partially correct in that chin-ups will create wide lats and rows will potentially create a thick back. But the part about not being able to create a thick back without rows is total fucking bullshit and shows a complete lack of understanding of human anatomy. The reason rows have the potential to create back thickness is not because they work the lats from a different angle or some hocus pocus bodybuilding BS like that. If the lats are extending the humerus, then the lats are extending the humerus. It doesn't matter if you're rowing or chinning. In fact, chin-ups actually work the extension pattern through a much larger range of motion than rows do and put a much larger eccentric stress on the lats and therefore create the potential for much more lat hypertrophy. But again, that's neither here nor there. And the reason why rows create this coveted back thickness is because they hammer the hell out of the spinal erectors. While you're doing a row, what muscles do you think are busy holding your back in extension while your lats extend the humerus? The spinal erectors, the group of muscles that runs the length of your spine on both the left and right side from your sacrum up to the base of your skull that everyone always seems to forget exists when they're talking about the back. That's where the thickness comes from. Well, let me ask you another question. When you're doing a heavy deadlift, what muscles do you think are busy holding your spine in extension while your hip and knee extensors help raise your body to a fully erect position? If you guessed the spinal erectors, then you guessed correctly. Do you see where I'm going with this? There is nothing achieved by rows that isn't achieved by deadlifts and chin-ups. And to do both rows and deadlifts is in fact redundant. Yet chin-ups work the lats better than rows without fatiguing the lower back. And deadlifts work the spinal erectors just as good as, if not better than rows, while also providing the benefits of increased glute, hamstring, and quad strength. So why would I ever choose to incorporate rows when I know that's going to cause my deadlift work to take a hit? Missing out on deadlifting volume and intensity for a training cycle or two is no big deal. 
but missing out on deadlifting volume and intensity for years on end throughout the entire course of my training career simply so that I can continue to do barbell rows out of stubbornness or tradition or whatever, even though they provide me with no additional benefits, is cumulatively going to lead to thousands of fewer reps logged on the deadlift and ultimately going to lead to a weaker deadlift which means less developed hip extensors, less hip strength, less total body strength and power, less carryover to general athleticism, and less overall back strength, even if the spinal erectors develop at the same rate, which is a big if because the loads used in the deadlift far exceed the loads used during a row. Oh, and one more thing. The lower back is part of a group of muscles called the posterior chain, which consists of the glutes, hamstrings, and the muscles of the lower back. They all work together to achieve vital functions like hip extension. So if you're constantly trashing your lower back with heavy barbell rows, you'll be drastically shortchanging your ability to really train your glutes and hamstrings to an adequate degree because the fatigue in your lower back will simply be too much of a hindrance to allow your glutes and hamstrings to perform a thorough amount of hard and heavy work. Remember, it's a chain. And if one link in the chain is severely weaker than the rest, then the whole unit is compromised. The reason why deadlifts work so well, even though they too trash the lower back, is because they work the entire chain simultaneously. Rows don't. So where does this leave us? Well, some of you are probably asking yourself after this whole rant, why the hell I bother doing face pulls or cable rows? To address the latter, I only do them when I decrease my deadlifting frequency or volume. Before, I was deadlifting twice a week, whereas in this upcoming training cycle, I'll be deadlifting just once a week. So now, I can use the cable row to get in some extra low stress volume for my back while still keeping the overall stress on my lower back lower than it was before, which will facilitate some recovery and allow me to come back fresh for some heavier deadlifts in a month or two. And as for the face pull, the one thing that all the exercises I've mentioned up to this point have in common is that they do a really good job of either working the lats or working the rest of the back basically up to its midpoint. But none of them really hammer the muscles of the upper back in quite the same way. And you can never have too strong of an upper back. So the upper back gets some extra treatment. Not to mention the face pull has the additional benefit of strengthening the rear delts as well, which is important to help balance out all the pressing we tend to do. Anyway, I think that covers pretty much all the valid points, though I'm sure someone will still hop on here just to tell me I'm an idiot. Well, my argument is clear, and it's based on years of experience as well as a grasping of human anatomy, and I think my results pretty much speak for themselves. My lats and spinal erectors are both very well developed, and nary a row has been done for the last decade. In fact, next to my quads, my back as a whole is certainly my most well developed body part. And it's also got the strength to withstand the stresses involved in deadlifting nearly 600 pounds. So until someone can come up with a truly compelling argument for why I should do more rows that involves more than just a nod to tradition and bro science, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's all I got for now, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Keep training hard and I will catch you guys next time.